Meet Artemis Fowl, child prodigy who combined fairy technology and human technology to made, make a sort of hybrid technology that is centuries ahead of current human technology. But this comes with a danger. An evil man has stolen this technology and he might bring doom to the fairy world and the human world. Well, typical day, right? Hello, fellow book questers! It is I, Aaron the Book Quester. Today I have this awesome, epic book. The. I think this is the third installment in the Artemis Fowl series Artemis Fowl and the Eternity Code by Eon Calver. As usual, I still don't know if I'm pronouncing that name right, but let's get right on to it. This book is about the child prodigy Artemis Fowl. His IQ is higher than Albert Einstein, who is known to be the smartest of men who ever lived. But Artemis is no man. He is a mere boy in his teens. And he is a little bit of a friend with the LEP, the Lower Elements, Elements Police, and one, uh, one officer in particular, Captain Holly Short. But this time, Artemis has screwed up. When he had made the hybrid technology, he didn't realize that someone would try to steal it. Of course, he did know the risks, but he wasn't careful enough this time. And now, a genius and a billionaire named John Spiro, I believe? I don't know about the first name. It's Mr. Spiro came ahead and stole Artemis Fowl's dear technology, and with it, John Spiro could rule the world. Which is as melodramic and cliche that sounds is true. And Artemis Fall needs to stop John Spiro and he knows that he cannot do this on his own. Why? Because he has Butler obviously, but he can't he can't go against an entire empire with that super vast technology of the fairies. And so, he brings Holly Short and Julius Root's help, along with Mulch Diggums, and together the gang's back together again. But this hired help from the fairies ha comes with a price, a very dear price. The fairies are saying that, that, that finally, Artemis Fowl had become too much of a threat to the fairy community, which meant that he had to be mind wiped and brainwashed and memory blocked of any memory of ex of the existing people, which include elves and dwarves and all that whatnot, all that crazy adventures he had gone through. Holly Short, Julius Root, and Mulchigams would all be erased from his mind, which, in my opinion, kind of sucks. But at this point. There is no sucks if the fairies and the humans are at war, so yeah, here we are again. And Artemis Fall, with the help of really advanced fairy technology, together Art Artemis devises a miraculous plan as usual, our child prodigy, and he will not be outsmart again. And he is Artemis Fowl, child prodigy with an IQ higher than Albert Einstein. And he has a plan. And that plan would not have a very happy ending for John Spiro. And John Spiro did had the, made a little mistake of calling Art saying Artemis was a girl name and laughing at Artemis. Artemis had a good comeback to that. Artemis could was well referred to the Greek goddess of the hut, and it could be named for a name for both a female and a male, and Artemis would hunt Spiro. And that's a direct quote from the book, so enjoy. I'm not gonna spoil the entire ending, but let's just say it. Even when your when even when your heart sinks low, and you think that Artemis's plans have been foiled. They never are. Inside his plans, there are plans and backup plans and backup plans to backup plans. And all his fails and mistakes and slip-ups are all part of the plan. 
And like always, your book quester, Aaron the book quester. It is an awesome book, a must read an absolute patient. I do try to read half a book a day, but for this series it's simply not possible.